When you cruise into Lisbon, you'll stop near a couple of metro stations, and it's easy to walk to the square. But you may have been there many times on the way to Cape Verde, the Canaries, or even the Caribbean or the Mediterranean. So if you've seen Lisbon, and you've seen Time Out, and you've seen the hill, you may want to venture out and see a palace, which is only 20 minutes away on the train. The Palace of Toulouse is an 18th century palace and has been used in movies and the miniseries Gulliver's Travels, where it doubles as Brobdingag. The Palace Wing, the pavilion of Donna Maria, is now used as a guest house for visiting foreign heads of state. OK, this is how to get there. From the ship, to metro, to boat station, to the square, Walk along the coastal road towards Commercial Square. You'll know it because of the huge statue of King Jose mounted on his horse in the middle. Walk through the square, then the second square, and as you go up to the top square, three squares in a row as you walk away from the sea, the Rosio station is on your left-hand side, and this is the best one to go from. The station is in the square where the shuttle bus often drops you off. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I bought two tickets for Kelu's and he knew what I was talking about. So that was an easy journey, 18 minutes it took. After you come through the ticket barrier, you turn right and take that exit. Come down the escalator and you'll see a signpost for the palace. This way. Follow the signs. So we've arrived at the palace, it's just one straight road down and it's an 18 minute walk after the 18 minutes on the train, not far. The throne room, also known as the Great Room, was designed by French artist Jean-Baptiste de Robillon and dates back to 1774. It's Rococo style. The historical organ in the Royal Chapel represents one of the greatest feats in Portuguese organ making.
It looks like the restoration work is absolutely non-stop. This is one of the bedrooms. This one belonged to Jose. This room was built between 1754 and 1762. It's the room of columns, the evening music room. unique works of art. It depicts the royal family attending a music session. This painting is a copy and if you look at the character dressed in black, you will see he is wearing a pair of 20th century glasses and no one knows why. It was here that Queen Maria's ladies-in-waiting gathered. This final phase of decoration in 1767, according to a document, refers to a payment for a carpenter fixing the roses to the ceiling. This composition looks like a This room has paintings depicting La Mancha and Don Quixote around the room. And this room was used as a dressing room. The audio guide is an app on your phone and there's a QR code to take you on a quest around the garden. Nowadays, everything is worked off your phone. Not to be missed, the tiled ceramic canal. It's decorated with 18th century scenes and the royal family often used to take a boat down here on sunny afternoons to enjoy themselves. The palace is often referred to as the Portuguese Versailles. In 1908, it became the property of the state and was extensively restored in 1934 following a serious fire, which gutted a third of its interior. Most of the paintings are copies. One of the most impressive walkways in these beautiful gardens is Bosquet Grove with this stunning view. Many of the trees here were brought in from the Netherlands in the 1750s. The palace is one of the last great Rococo buildings to be designed in Europe. Surrounded by beautiful lakes and fountains and lead statues depicting mythological scenes, the palace combines Baroque, Rococo and neoclassical architecture designs and the gardens are inspired by French styles. Many of the statues in the gardens were imported from Italy, but these lead statues were commissioned by John Cheer, the British sculptor. Mm -hmm. 
some more of John Cheer's work and there's Neptune, God of the Sea. The Palace of Caluse was a summer retreat for Don Pedro of Raganza. He later married his own niece, Queen Maria I, and so became King Consort. After he died in 1786, Queen Maria descended into madness and was incarcerated here. Her madness worsened after the death of her son from smallpox in 1786. The palace became the official residence of Prince Regent John VI in 1794. Welcome to the King's Garden, designed by Christian IV in 1606, Renaissance style. It sits outside the King's Palace. Rosenberg Castle houses some of Denmark's greatest treasures, including the crowns and the crown jewels. Let's take a look. And in the treasury is the crown jewels. We're starting our tour of the Almudena Palace, which is mainly Moorish, and this is the Hall of the Fireplaces. Guess why? 